Okay, welcome to this slideshow, which is a slideshow on how to print and renovate the overgrown garden by me, and I'm Cass Turnbull, and I'm with an organization called Plant Amnesty, which is the world's only organi organization whose sole mission is to end the senseless torture and mutilation of trees and shrubs caused by malpruning. Honest to God, that's our mission. The IRS approved it. Uh, and we have everything you need to know about pruning. Um, we have DVDs like this, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, we have a book, which I wrote for you, that explains pruning chapter by chapter. In the Seattle area, we have a referral service of people who know how to prune. We have a membership of a thousand people who get a newsletter. You can always look us up at plantamnesty.org. And just briefly about myself, I've been gardening for 30 years. 11 years of that were with the Seattle Park Department. And, um, and then the rest of that time, I've been running my own landscape maintenance business. So you know I've actually done all this stuff and I haven't just read about it. Uh, I'm also a certified ISA certified arborist and I'm a certified landscaper and I'm certified to teach at uh, various colleges and technical schools on the topic of pruning. One, one horse show, it's all on pruning. Um, there's different kinds of pruning. There's uh, some pruning is done annually and uh, examples of that would be pruning art like topiary, uh, pruning fruit trees and other fruit producing you know, berry bushes that you prune every year like your raspberries or your apple trees. There's annual pruning for your hedges which you shear every year a lot of your roses and your vines and those are specialty pruning and they're not covered in this slide so so if you're looking at this to learn how to prune fruit trees you'll have to try somewhere else because what i teach is pruning for landscape control and actually the pruning that's done once your landscape is overgrown here we have a slide that shows your typical overgrown garden a lot of you will identify with this um, most uh, bad pruning comes from over planting, which is to say people put too many plants in too little spaces, and this itself is as common as dirt. Everybody over plants. Uh, your homeowners over plant, your landscape designers over plant. You can spend a lot of extra money and get a landscape architect to over plant your garden. Um, and, uh, Pruning can't fix that, then you'll have to redesign. But even a very well-planned landscape after, oh, say 15 to 30 years is going to need a reworking. And pruning is just one of the solutions to the overgrown garden. What doesn't work is what people automatically think of doing, which is to cut it all back, back to the size I used to like these trees and shrubs but that doesn't work and uh, I can tell you why. The reason is most people use the non-selective heading cut uh, also um, uh, and uh, people are hoping that they will cut their shrub back to the size they like and uh, you can see here that it's made shorter and they're hoping that that will tell the shrub to stay that size and maybe force a little growth down below but that's not what happens. Every time you make this non-selective heading cut, you stimulate dormant buds to grow out and they grow out fast into many straight shoots that we call water sprouts or sometimes they're erroneously called suckers. This is the bad news. Um, these water sprouts are straight, skinny, and growing five times as fast as the plant was before. Uh, the next reaction to this is just to whack them all back again in hopes that that will work. It obviously didn't get the message. But every place you make a cut, you don't stop or slow down your shrub or tree. You just get more water sprouts. You cut those off and you get more and more. You cut those off, you get more and more and more, and you've created this monster in your backyard uh, that's unmanageable. 
I call this the Hydra effect. After the snake that Hercules battled, this was a giant serpent and Hercules cut off its head and two grew in its place. And then he cut those off and four grew in its place. And so here you're, um, you've uh, declared war on your shrubs or trees and it will only end when either you or the shrub or tree dies. Yes, that's the Hydra effect. And the definition of good pruning is pruning which does not stimulate the production of these water sprouts. About now, somebody in the audience raises their hand and says something like, uh, a cast, uh, what should you do? I mean, my, my neighbor, that's it. My neighbor has some of them there water sprouts. Uh, what should she do next? And I have an entire slideshow on rehabilitative pruning. Um, and uh, the news is good. Probably two thirds of the shrubs and maybe half of the trees can grow back to need, lead normal, useful lives. But um, the process is gonna take many years. Uh, the short version of rehabilitative pruning is one, wait, two, thin, three, wait, and four, thin. What happens if you don't wait and you prune too much too soon? Well, you get a whole bunch more water sprouts. Every fiber in your body is going, I need to take those off before they get out of hand. But you need to uh, restrain yourself and sit on your hands for a while. Those water sprouts will go straight up uh, until it reaches the size the tree or shrub was before it was malpruned. At that point, they will arch over, fatten up, put on side branches, and turn back into uh, a semblance of their former beauty. There's only two basic kinds of cuts. There's the heading cut, which means to shorten something, and the thinning cut, which means to take a branch off completely where it began as a bud. If you just knew the kinds of cuts and could anticipate what was going to happen next, uh, all the malpruning would disappear overnight. And uh, I should mention that probably 90% of what passes for pruning isn't pruning, it's malpruning. It's just cutting and it's going to get people into a lot of trouble. Uh, and that is with both homeowners and professional landscapers. I mean, it's why I had to start Plant Amnesty was it's just everywhere all the time. You'll know how bad you've been by how many water sprouts you have. There's different kinds of non-selective heading and uh, we're going to quickly go over those. I have another entire slideshow called the Slideshow of Pruning Horrors. That's H-O-R-R-O-R-S, Pruning Horrors. Uh, that goes over these a little more in depth. But for now, I want you to know that a very large non-selective heading cut on a tree is called tree topping and it's bad and it's wrong and you shouldn't do it. Uh, it we have sort of a scourge of tree topping. It seems that shortly after man emerged from a cave with a cutting implement, he cut off the top of a tree and it felt good. And we've been continuing doing this ever since and uh, it doesn't do any of the things it's supposed to. It doesn't keep trees short and it doesn't make them safe. Uh, so avoid topping your tree. Uh, you don't want to head. A smaller cut is called heading or heading back. Smaller than that is shrub shearing. That's when you use something that looks like a scissors to uh, shear all your shrubs into meatballs. Uh, that's wrong. It is okay to shear your formal hedges. Uh, and then little teeny tiny cuts called pinching, non-selective heading cuts, would be something you might do with your chrysanthemums to make things bushy. So non-selective heading's not good for making things short, it's good for making things bushy. Uh, tree topping is as common in this day and age as bloodletting was back in George Washington's day. This is what it looks like. Uh, back in George Washington's day, if you were sick, the doctor came and took out a pint of blood and that was supposed to make you feel better. 
it was very common. And in fact, George Washington died of bloodletting. Uh, not only is your tree ugly to begin with, it also sends out all these water sprouts, which very quickly reattain the height of the tree, except these are very weakly attached and may fall out and hurt somebody someday. Tipping or heading, that's the term for smaller non-selective heading. And this would be an example of a tree that somebody's headed into a ball. And this isn't as bad for the health of the tree. It doesn't cause as much rot or dieback, but it will cause water sprouts. Here's the same tree a couple years later, and you can see where each end has split. And the guy has to get up on his ladder every spring and whack off these increasing numbers of water sprouts, which he does right before it blooms, so it doesn't. So even though clipping your tree into a tidy ball is tempting, you want to avoid it and in favor of, and instead you want to selectively prune. Shearing, which is the second form of mal pruning, is when you take a head shears and sculpt your plants. Bored grounds crews get in to this quite a bit. Um, because if you're pruning just right, plants look natural, and uh, these gardeners uh, want some recognition for what they do. So they share everything in sight, and they get some compliments, and everything looks really tidy and under control, but it's bad for plants, just like tree topping is bad for trees. It looks really tidy to begin with, but next year you get this explosion of water sprouts or alternately you can get dieback of something that looks like snarls that collect the leaves so this is um, one a maintenance nightmare and two bad for the health of your shrubs uh, and why do we care about the health of your shrubs uh, the reason is healthy shrubs look good uh, and if you uh, want to keep your plants, you want to keep them looking good, which means you want to keep them healthy. Good pruning enhances the health of a plant. Bad pruning slowly decreases the health of the plant. Briefly, these are the reasons not to shear. Uh, one is you don't want the high maintenance battle against your plants caused by the explosion of water sprouts that just get worse. You also will increase uh, the amount of disease and pest problems and it, it compromises the health of your uh, and beauty of your shrub. Every shrub in your garden was picked because it does something special. It has a nice big leaf or cute little leaves or it's a bun or it has an angular branch structure or it has beautiful flowers and when you shear them you might eliminate all the flowers and they all begin to look the same. The third form of malpruning is over thinning. And thinning is more the correct way to prune, but sometimes people just do too much. This is the thinning cut, also known as the removal cut. They're changing the names of the cuts, uh, just like they changed the name of everything. Uh, but it's actually a pretty good change. A removal cut means that you follow the branch back to where it began as a bud and cut it off there. And you can do a series of little thinning cuts or a few big thinning cuts. So this is the thinning or removal cut and if you don't do too many and they're not too big you won't get water sprouts. But please note that thinning never made anything shorter. It's like taking off the lower limbs of a tree so that you can get underneath it or it might be like thinning out a shrub, like a Japanese maple or a camellia. And uh, so you can kind of see through it. It's airy and delicate as opposed to a big, angry blob of green. Over thinning comes with its own series of bad things. You can do a general over thinning, you can do an over skirting, or you can do something called lion's tailing, and these are all bad things to do to a tree or shrub. 
This is an over thinned and headed tree. Uh, somebody's taken off all the internal laterals. And it will do something like this next year. Holy moly. My husband calls this the fright. He says, oh, that's going to have a bad case of the fright next year. These are some over thinned or over skirted rhododendrons. You may have a different series of plants where you live. Uh, this slideshow is pretty much uh, made up of Pacific Northwest plants. But you may have a different series of plants where you live, but they are all divided into the same categories and they all live by the same rules. Uh, if you come from some other climate zone, you may want to go to the Plant Amnesty website and look up a pruning guide for your zone. Uh, and one of the things you do not want to do to any of your shrubs is to take off too many lower limbs. That's called overskirting or limbing up too far like these. It kind of looks like ostriches walking through the garden. These do not have the capacity <clears throat> to water sprout back, but uh, they do look a little weird. This is uh, an overskirted uh, tree. In general, your tree should be covered two-thirds in green and one-third in trunk. And in this case, it's been skirted up way too high. We call this an Innis Arden palm tree. It's really a dug fir. And it's not a very safe situation. This is an over-thinned conifer. And if you think like a plant, you sort of, uh, uh, it reminds you of an anorexic. It's been over-thinned. Trees feed themselves, trees and shrubs feed themselves by manufacturing mass and food out of sunshine and they use their leaves or needles as solar collectors. And when you take off their leaves or needles, you put them on a diet. It's okay to put them on a little diet, but you don't want to put them on to a starvation diet. The race is on with this tree. Can it put on enough needles before uh, it is uh, killed by a drought or a bug infestation or a root rot. Uh, it has been weakened by this over thinning.